Because you're all minorities. You're in the Glee Club. Welcome to Ms. Mojo Glow. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things on Glee that wouldn't work today. Number 10, how Figgins describes certain students. On more than one occasion, Principal Figgins has made comments about the attractiveness of some of McKinley's female students. He called Brittany sexy and described Unique to Sue as an attractive, buxom young woman. No principal or teacher should ever be thinking of their students in that context. But especially in the wake of the recent Me Too movement, comments like these would never be tolerated. Sexy teen imbeciles. Number 9, the biphobia. When Blaine is questioning his sexuality due to a kiss he shared with Rachel, Kurt basically tells him bisexuality doesn't exist. Later in the series, Santana says she's glad that her new girlfriend isn't bi like Britney, so she doesn't have to worry about her girlfriend leaving her for a man. This implies a harmful stereotype that bisexual people are promiscuous and unfaithful. And I finally have a girlfriend who I don't have to worry about straying for penis. Number 8. Inappropriate Relationships there were plenty of other students that the young teenagers of Glee could have gotten involved with romantically. Why did they ever have to get paired up with their teachers or any other adult authority figure? There was Puck and Shelby, Sam and the school nurse Penny, as well as Rachel's awkward flirting with Mr. Shu that went a little too far. Then there was April Rhodes, who was around the same age as Mr. Shu and actively pursuing a relationship with multiple high school students. Number 7. Making Fun of Britney's Breakdown Glee's second Britney Spears tribute episode parodies Spears' series of psychiatric breakdowns in 2007, with Glee's Britney attacking photographers with an umbrella and lazily lip-syncing during a performance of Gimme More. This behavior was caused by Britney getting kicked off the Cheerios, but the real Britney Spears had been dealing with serious mental health issues and challenges in her personal life. With the current Free Britney movement, people are very critical of how Spears' mental health has been handled in the past and present, and an episode like this this would not be well received. Number 6. The Handling of Marley's Eating Disorder In season 4, Marley develops an eating disorder. At one point, Ryder walks in on her purging, but instead of getting help, he tries to get her to stop by saying he doesn't want to kiss a girl with puke on her breath. Later, Marley passes out at sectionals, and she feels so guilty she apologizes to everyone. Overall, the situation was handled very poorly, and clumsily for how serious the issue they tried to address is. Number 5. A Disabled Character Played by an Abled Actor Artie was in a wheelchair for the entire series, but he was played by an abled actor, which took away the opportunity for a disabled actor to play the role. Sure, there were a few dream sequences in which Artie was able to get up and dance, but the exclusion of these dance numbers would have been worth it for the added authenticity that a disabled actor could have brought to the role. I'm tired of everybody pitying me, and I'm, I'm tired of being in this damn chair. Number 4. Sue Blackmail's Figgins when Sue gets suspended from her position at McKinley, she decides that the best way to get back to work is to slip Principal Figgins a date rape drug so she can blackmail him with a photo of them in bed together. The scene feels like a joke at the expense of male sexual assault victims, who are constantly seeing their most traumatic experiences mocked and belittled in the media. Number 3. A trans character being played by a cis woman in Season 6 of Glee, Coach Beast comes out as transgender and changes names from Shannon to Sheldon. It was a decision reportedly made late in the series, and as such, contradicted the point of Beast's character originally being a woman that did not want or need to conform to traditionally feminine gender stereotypes. They also shouldn't have cast a cisgender woman to play him, and instead should have given the opportunity to a trans actor. Number 2. Sue's Casual Racism and Homophobia Sprinkled in between jokes about Will's hair or the Glee Club's obsession with show tunes are insults based on the race or sexual orientation of whoever Sue's target is at the moment. In other scenes, Sue is an outspoken advocate for minorities and stands up for those being genuinely mistreated. This makes these random insults based on race and sexuality feel especially bizarre and out of character. Asian. Other Asian. Aretha. And Shaft. Number 1. The Representation of Minorities 
Glee really tried to create a diverse cast of characters for the series, but it often fell short in developing these characters in a non-stereotypical way. Mercedes became the sassy black woman who barely got a chance to shine unless she was belting out the last high note of a big group number. Mike obsessed over his grades to appease his Asian parents, and Santana was a hot-headed and hypersexualized Latina. All of these characters had to speak up for a chance at being in the spotlight, because the default for solos and lead roles was always one of the more well-developed white characters like Rachel or Finn. It's unfortunate that Glee had so many opportunities for interesting and diverse characters that they didn't take. I got an A-minus, Tina. You got an Asian F? 